everyone, I'm Liz and this is Alex and we are traveling around the world full time focusing on primarily independent adventure based travel and today we wanted to touch base with you on something that we would have found really useful when we first went to Nepal which is comparing three iconic tracks in Nepal. So the three tracks we're gonna be comparing today is the Three High Passes, Everest Space Camp, and Annapurna Circuit Trek. They all are great tracks overall, so we're just gonna give some pros and cons for each of them based on our experience. Granted, we did complete the Annapurna Circuit three years ago, so there was a bit of a gap between when we completed the three high passes in Everest Base Camp and the Annapurna Circuit. So let's dive right in. So number one, the three high passes track. This one, in our opinion, has the most spectacular and vast amount of mountain scenery. I mean, it's just gorgeous, giant Himalayas surrounding you. You get parts of that with both the EBC track and the Annapurna Circuit especially when you're going to Everest Space Camp and when you're going over Throngala Pass on the Annapurna Circuit. But for just the sheer quantity and just gorgeousness, the three passes, in our opinion, takes the cake for the most spectacular mountain scenery. It is also the most physically challenging of the three hikes. You go up the highest and you stay up there for the longest amount of time. Yeah, so if you're really looking for like a big physical challenge, this would be kind of considered a pro to you, but I guess if you're um, not looking for something as challenging, this could be under the con category. But we'll dive into the cons right now. So the cons of the three high passes trek is also just that it is so exhausting. Like I think we underestimated this. We've done a bunch of different mountains and treks and backpacking trips all over the world. And for us, it, I think this was probably one of the hardest physical things we've ever done. Granted, we were both suffering from sicknesses. If you haven't seen our videos on this, definitely go check them out. We'll link them up above and down below because we definitely suffered a bit along the way. <laughs> one of the biggest cons I would say is that the Three High Passes trek is very crowded, at least for the first week or so where it follows the Everest Base Camp trek. Once you get off of the Everest Base Camp portions, then you see a lot fewer crowds. But for those portions where you're following the Everest Base Camp, it is very, very crowded. Yeah, granted we went during October, which is the highest trekking season in Nepal. If you're going to do the Three High Passes trek and you're very averse to crowds, consider going during a time when it's a little bit more of the shoulder, it's just not during the, the peak. Time. One of the other cons for the Three Passes Trek and for the Everest Base Camp Trek is that it seems like you're trekking through villages that are built for tourists, compared to the Annapurna Circuit where it feels like you're trekking through villages that are there regardless of the trekking. So overall, choose the Three High Passes Trek if you're looking for a very accomplishing trek, if you're able to do this full trek. Trust me, it is an accomplishment, it's not physically easy. Also, if you're looking for just the most insane mountain scenery you can ever possibly imagine, definitely choose the Three High Passes Trek. All right, sticking with the Everest trekking region, we're gonna to talk to you about the pros and cons of the Everest Base Camp Trek. Obviously, the biggest pro of the Everest Base Camp Trek is that you can go to the Everest Base Camp. It's a very famous destination and you get to say that you've been to the Everest Base Camp. It's very easy to follow the trail as well, because you just follow the crowds. There's no real concern with getting lost here. Another pro is that you do get to see Everest and you get to see some gorgeous mountain scenery on the way to the Everest Base Camp. Another pro is that if you are short on time, the EBC trek will probably take you the least amount of time. And now on to the cons. The biggest con of the Everest Base Camp Trek is the crowds. It is incredibly crowded. You won't have a single day of trekking where you're trekking alone. There will always be swarms of crowds and donkeys and yaks that will be on the trail with you. When we hiked the Annapurna Circuit three years ago, we thought that was crowded until we hiked the EBC just last fall. And 
I was just completely shocked by how crowded it was. Definitely, if you're seeking solitude, Everest Base Camp, it's a trek we would least recommend for you. Again, we went during October, which is the peak trekking season, so this does impact crowds from what we've been told. If you really want to do Everest Base Camp and you want to be able to say, I went to Everest Base Camp and maybe you're short on time, this could be a good trek for you. Just maybe go during the shoulder season. But before you plan to go in the shoulder season, just be aware that going in the winter months like December and January, it can reach incredibly freezing temperatures. Yeah, so make sure you're going like just a little bit before, a little bit after the trekking season and monitor the weather. Another con of the Everest Base Camp Trek is that you miss some insanely gorgeous mountain scenery that's just a little short trek away. So when we recommend the Everest Base Camp to people, we always say add on some side treks. A day trek away from one of the parts on the Everest Base Camp is just probably the most some of the most gorgeous scenery we've ever seen in our life. So beautiful turquoise lake and yeah. mountain scenery. If you're going to do the Everest Base Camp trek and you want to have a little bit of solitude or get some really insane views, it would only add on a day or two if you go over to Gokio and trek back to Lukla from there. So overall, choose the Everest Base Camp if you're wanting to say, hey, I went to Everest Base Camp. I went to this iconic destination that so many people have dreamt about. We met so many men on the trail who have been thinking about doing this trek for 20 plus years so if this is you this is on your bucket list and let's say you're short on time definitely consider the Everest Base Camp you are going to be dealing with more crowds but if you choose a shoulder season that can work out also if you're a little hesitant about going to areas that are just so remote you definitely won't be alone on the Everest Base Camp trek again though we would recommend adding some side tracks though, just cause you're already out there. You might as well go see some gorgeous scenery, just a day track away. So now we're gonna talk about the Annapurna circuit. The Annapurna circuit feels very different than the three high passes and Everest Base Camp Trek. They're in completely different regions of Nepal. Annapurna circuits, I feel like the main draw for this is that you definitely get more culture along with the trekking so if you really are trying to kind of immerse yourself in the culture a bit and also see some gorgeous mountain scenery i we definitely would recommend the annapurna circuit over the other two treks the reason being is that the first part of the trek you're going through tibetan buddhist territory so you have tons of prayer wheels you see people actually like praying on the prayer wheels we went to a temple in upper basang and heard buddhist monks chanting like it's just it feels very much like you're able to get that culture and then on the other side of thorong la it's like it's literally divided over that pass so thorong la for those of you who aren't familiar with the annapurna circuit is the climax of the trek. It's the highest point you go over, it's 17,000 something feet. And um, on the other side, it's Hindu. Um, it's primarily Hindu culture. And so we met people doing their pilgrimages and stuff like that to Mustang, and there's temples there. It's definitely much more of a cultural experience. And the uh, villages are there that are like, yes, they have tea houses that guests stay in, However, they also have villages where people are like farming and just living their life, which was nice. It didn't feel like they were only built there for tourists. Another pro of the Annapurna circuit is that it is quite a bit cheaper to do. When you do the three passes trek and the Everspace camp trek, most people will arrange a flight from either Kathmandu or Ramchamp. And that flight for two people, I think cost us around $700 down and back and you don't have to do that if you do the Annapurna circuit. It's just a long but inexpensive bus ride to where the trek starts in Besi Sahar. It is possible to do the Everest Base Camp and the Three Passes trek without flying all the way to Lukla. You do have to add on at least a week of hiking and then you take a bus from Kathmandu to Jiri. Also, the guest houses and tea houses in the Annapurna region are much less expensive than they are in the Everest region. Yeah, granted we went three years ago, but 
we've heard from other people that it still seems to be the more affordable option. Additionally, it feels like there are much more independent truckers doing the Annapurna circuit versus the other two treks we did. So if you're thinking about going independently, you will probably find it a little bit easier to kind of connect with people who are also going independently. Granted, we have been told that we, like our experience on the Everest Base Camp and at Three Passes Trek, was a little bit abnormal that there are more independent trekkers. When we went, there was like no one, but uh, we've been told that other people are able to connect with other independent trekkers. So maybe it was the season we went, but I think when we did the Annapurna circuit, I would say more than 50% of people were going independently. And there were very few porters and guides on the trek. So versus the Everest Base Camp and Three Passes area, it seemed like everybody had a guide and porter or guide comp porter combo. One of my favorite aspects of the Annapurna circuit was the diversity that you get in the landscapes. Sure, in the Everest region, you see a lot of really high mountains and that's really beautiful. But one of the cool things about the Annapurna circuit is that each day it feels like you're in a totally different region. One day you're hiking through desert. Another day you're hiking through forest that looks like something out of the Pacific Northwest of the United States. And then in another day you're hiking past 8,000 meter peaks that are just looming above you. So just the, the diversity in the terrain is just so amazing. Another pro for the Annapurna circuit is that it is much more gradual going up than the Everspace Camp at Three Passes tracks. Also, if you do the full Annapurna circuit like we did, you'll see much fewer crowds on the two ends because a lot of people will cut off the first few days and cut off the few last days. So on either end, you're gonna see much fewer crowds. After we passed Johnson, which is a point where a lot of people will just grab a Jeep and head out, we were practically alone for a day or two on the Annapurna circuit. So con. So the biggest con to me of the Annapurna circuit was that during certain parts, because they've built out roads, you're going to be competing with vehicle traffic as well as there's some biking groups that go up the Annapurna circuit as well. There are ways to avoid excessive street or road walking with the vehicles. There are like either maps you can find spots that kind of go around it, but still some parts of it, you're going to be walking on the main road and vehicles will be passing by and that will fly up dust and stuff like that and just kind of interrupt the you know serene mountain scenery so bear that in mind another thing is that it can get very crowded from Manong to Johnson so as we mentioned as one of the pros you know the side parts it's much less crowded but from Manang to Johnson, because so many people will just take a vehicle up to Manang and then take a bus or a jeep from Johnson, that part of the track can be quite crowded. And when we did it, we were competing with bike traffic, which was extremely annoying to say the least on narrow roads. When we first planned our trip to the Annapurna region three years ago, I really wanted to see Mount Everest. And that was one of the cons of doing the Annapurna circuit is that I was not able to see it. And I had to wait three years till we went back last fall to finally be able to see it in person. Yeah, because you won't get any views. You'll get views of Annapurna and other gorgeous 8,000 meter peaks on the Annapurna circuit, but you do not see the iconic highest mountain on earth, Mount Everest. So if that's something that you have to absolutely see, consider those other two tracks we talked about. So I know we've thrown a lot of information at you, so we're gonna be putting together a summary here. So overall, if you're wanting that cultural experience combined with hiking, we would recommend the Annapurna Circuit. If you're wanting the most gorgeous mountain views you could ever possibly imagine, do the three high passes trek. If you're a little nervous about trekking independently and you've never trekked independently before, choose the Annapurna circuit. There are more people who go unguided and it's very clear and easy to follow. And you aren't at high elevation for as long of a period of time. So if you've never experienced high elevation, the Annapurna circuit is probably your safer bet because there are ways to get down if you need to as well. Whereas on the three high passes in Everest Base Camp Trek, you are out there, so you aren't gonna be able to get down very easily if you do really struggle with the altitude. Unless you get a helicopter. 
Yes, we did see people helicopter out. <laughs> so you can technically, it's just gonna cost you quite a bit. Overall, if you're wanting something that's more affordable, we'd recommend the Annapurna Circuit. Annapurna Circuit, just the cost of food, the tea houses, and getting there was just so much more cheaper than the other two trucks. However, if you're really wanting to see Mount Everest, I would choose either the Three High Passes or the Everest Base Camp truck. Additionally, if you're wanting to be able to say, hey, I did Everest Base Camp, do the Everest Base Camp truck, but you could also do that in combination with the Three High Passes truck or add an extra day or two by going over going back in a different direction than where you came so you can get some of the most insane mountain views you've ever seen in your life. If you're really wanting to challenge yourself physically and you're really just kind of like, yeah, I want to see what I can do, Three High Passes truck is the truck for you. That is insane. You go over three passes that are above 17,000 feet, one that's 18,000 something feet, and if you add Everest Base Camp, you get another one there, so that's four. And if you're able to do that, that's just amazing. If you're super short on time and want to see Mount Everest, definitely do the Everest Base Camp trek. If you want to feel like you're really out there and there's not many crowds, definitely consider doing um, parts of the three high passes trek were like that. Not the Everest Base Camp portion, but some of the other passes felt very uh, remote and out there. On the Annapurna circuit, as we mentioned, some of the um, parts before Manang and before uh, and after Johnson felt very remote and out there. Overall though, you're gonna be most remote, like in terms of not being able to get anywhere on the three high passes track. So if that's something you're really seeking, that getting really out there, like you're gonna be days walk from civilization, three high passes track is probably your track. Overall, if you choose any of these treks, it's gonna be amazing. We absolutely love trekking in Nepal, hence why we have done all three of these treks. <laughs> we love it, it's just, there's something magical about the Himalayas. It's definitely a big adventure, any of these treks you choose. So let us know what you guys think of this, what trek you would consider based on this. I'd love to see if this helped anyone decide which trek they wanna do. Definitely let us know, and if you have any other questions, hit us up as well, and I hope you guys have an amazing trek. If you are interested in following our full series we did on the three high passes and Everest Base Camp trek, we'll link that all down below. We created video logs of everything, pretty much all the ups and downs of our trekking experience. So we'll link that down below. And if you're interested in following along our adventures, we're traveling full time. We do a lot of adventure-based travel. We have some fun adventures coming up. 